Welcome to another edition of Joy Business Special. Today, we are privileged to have with us Olga Arara Kimani, who is the Corporate Affairs Marketing and Branding Boss for Africa and Middle East Standard Chartered Bank. She is going to be speaking to us uh, about the operations. She's in Ghana. Obviously, something got her here and things are happening with regards to your bank, which is Standard Chartered Bank. And she's going to be telling us all the interesting things with regards to these banks and some of the things that they have under their sleeve. When it comes to digital banking, you know that it is Standard Chartered where you get what you want. That is where you can have all your transactions done seamlessly without any problem. And she's with me today to discuss even more into details what are the new plans that they have to excite you, the customer who's watching us today? Thank you very much, um, Olga. Thank you, Norman. Um, how are you doing? Uh, let me ask that, I mean, Standard Chartered Bank, uh, we've seen you move from the traditional way of banking more into the digital area. What got you to feel that, look, let's begin to move from the traditional way of doing things? Actually, a lot of it is driven by what we would say the client trends. Uh, you will see particularly on the front of mobile telephony, the take up of that, and I think particularly in Ghana, is very big. I think probably 70% penetration in the last statistics, you know, that have been shared. But I think something that makes it even more interesting for us in Standard Chartered is that our country and our footprints, especially across Africa, Middle East, tend to be very um, geographically dispersed. So getting people to travel, to come and take advantage of what you were calling previously, you know, traditional channels of having to come into a branch are quickly falling away. So the more that we as a bank can tap into that, ensure that a lot more of our clients are able to access our services, has, is really driving the digital innovation. And really also as well, the element of getting people to use more mobile telephony to access their financial services. I see, when I look at um, Africa, Ghana, there are a lot of people who think that, no, we've not gotten there yet when it comes to the digital aspect of banking. They still have fears. How do you allay these kind of fears for these people to understand that, look, you don't have to worry. You know what happened to the uh, cryptocurrencies issues where people got up, they couldn't find their money and all that. How do you tell that customer that, look, you know what, don't worry. We've taken care of everything. Just use the digital banking services yeah. that we have. Yeah. I think actually it's two fronts for us, especially in a market like uh, Ghana. You will see the take up particularly of mobile wallets is very high. People are not worried about um, utilizing that to do financial transactions, whether it's peer to peer or paying for any um, services. And I think for us, it's also tapping into that. So it's not really about people then starting to invest into cryptocurrencies, as you've uh, you know, alluded to there. But I think we provide as a bank a secure, safe, you know, mobile environment for them to be able to do their financial transactions. And in fact, on top of that, we are now looking at ways to even expand, you know, that offering. So from your typical current account or a savings account, we want them to be able to do fixed deposits. We're in future looking to enhance that to cover insurance and, you know, wealth management. So looking at mutual funds and things like that. But again, to emphasize that it's being done in a completely, you know, secure environment that they know that you've got a trusted financial institution behind the, um, you know, investments or the type of transactions that you are doing. I'm sure that when you talk about the mobile banking, what we know is the mobile money wallets. And that is not really uh, running on online or getting proper into the digital space because mobile money wallets and the way we do the transactions. Maybe that's the reason why my grandmother sitting in the village is more comfortable using that. But when it comes to the digital side, where we have challenges, I mean, people feel that, okay, I don't want too much of my details. I don't want people to be able to, you know, uh, get certain kind of information. Privacy, how does the bank handle it? So actually, to just correct you a little bit, Novad, in terms of the mobile wallets, with Standard Chartered, you actually can transfer money from your account to mobile wallet and mobile wallet into, um, you know, your account. So that is something that we've actually been having for a long time in terms of the integration we've been able to do with the mobile service providers. I think a little bit of education is required, and hence why, you know, we participate in some of these interviews you know, that are set up uh, with people like yourself, you know, around um, the Joy Business News. Is that even as much as somebody will be using a mobile wallet, you're really not building a credit score or a behavioral score that we as a bank would use 
on what you would need in future. Let's say you now want to invest in your business. We have a big business banking you know, offering that we do here. But we'd like to see your behavior, whether you've been a good payer, whether you've been a good um, saving uh, person you know, on the back end. And that's why we encourage more and more people that even while the mobile wallets would continue to offer you that convenience in terms of doing the smaller transactions, eventually when you're getting into that bigger space, you will eventually want a mortgage, you'll eventually want a credit card. It's better that you do have a banking relationship that again, we're able to check there and see what your relationship would be. Does this qualify for your grandmother? I think so. There could be elements where maybe she's looking in terms of handling her wealth. How would she want to make sure that she's leaving a good legacy behind, you know, in, in future? And we are the bank that would probably be the best place to advise on that. And what sort of um, products do you have? I mean, you, you talk of you have wealth, wealth, wealth. Somebody's watching and what is wealth? What is, what is it about? Right. So, so wealth management from our back end, actually, it's very um, diverse because, again, we try to make sure that we're tailoring it to the individual person. Novan, I'm sure you've seen a lot of the statistics, even in sp uh, specific reference to Ghana, talking about how Africa is having the fastest growing middle class. So it's not just about living from day to day in terms of your needs. It means that people are having much more disposable income. We then come in as a bank to say, as a financial institution, what are you doing with this additional financial um, you know, exposure that you have? Maybe you want to save in future in terms of an education system to take your child abroad. How do we help you in that journey? If you're a young person who's just started you know, your job and you're also looking to make sure that you're going to be financially secure in future. So our wealth management solutions cover that whole um, area. But again, as we said, it's not a one size fits all. We then go out and tailor individual requirements, whether you're a young person, you're a young family member, you've got children, and what it is you're looking to do. And what basically means that if you have extra money and you want to invest, you're saying that let's come to Stanchard. What are the rates that you have that is better than what we see out there? Uh, In Ghana today, just before you mm. go ahead, I mean, we have a lot of challenges when it comes to investment. We've heard of the um, uh, what do you call it, the DKMs, we've heard of all those companies that have had their own challenges. I'm sure you've heard men's gold, even before you came to you've read about it and all that, where people have taken their monies just because these people are given what we describe as outrageous interest. Mm -hmm. And investors are testing. Come on, they are looking for where they can get the best returns on their investment. So from your side, what do you have to show? So, Novan, I'm not a qualified financial advisor. I need to make sure that that disclaimer is put there so that the viewers are also not rushing to come. It's something that we do a detailed assessment before any of those decisions, obviously, are given to a client to make sure that they're making the best advised decision. But I think what I can say is we are a bank that has been here for more than 120 years. We're a solid bank, you know, secure in that, you know, regulated, obviously, by the, the central bank. So I think we're well known in terms of, you know, providing solid financial solutions to our clients. And I think that is to the extent that I'll be able to, to comment on that. I think it is for the clients to obviously come over and speak to our wealth management advisors so that they can get the best advice on that. Well, whilst they come, you've been a banker for many, for many years. I mean, uh, what, well, not that would, many. You describe, <laughs> what yes, would you describe? What would you describe as the best and right when you walked into a bank and you want to invest and then you're hearing all the 10%, 20, 15, 25, and all that. I mean, ideally, what would you tell an investor if he walks to you and say, okay, I have $100,000 and I want to invest. Somebody says he wants to give me um, two 25% per month. Uh, what is it that you have available? What would be the best advice you would give? So I think, Novad, I'll still push back on that. I think investment is a very personal decision. I don't think it's something that we will be able to cover all the available uh, solutions that would be there. So again, I think my advice to everybody else is ensure that you're talking to a qualified financial advisor, not listening to decisions that Olga or Novad probably would, would have made, you know, five or ten years ago. I think it's a very personal decision that you need, but I think what is underlying is find a qualified financial advisor who would take you that, who would do a proper uh, assessment and then handhold you through the journey of making, you know, the best investment that would suit your needs. Okay, now let's move into your very area that you are in. I mean, we're looking at branding. What's the thing that makes, or what's the plan going forward in terms of your trying to position Stanchart here in Ghana? 
Yeah. I think my work has been made easy by the team that is already here. Uh, we in Standard Chartered Ghana are already recognized uh, as a thought leader. You know, we are recognized in terms of the client solutions that we've been able to provide. We've been recognized by being a, a strong uh, business. I think my work in partnering with our local team here is how do we now change it? And again, I think from the beginning of the conversation that we'd had about the digital adoption. How do we make sure that clients are aware that there's a much easier way that fits in with their lifestyle to be able to do their normal day-to-day -day transactions, where they don't have to worry about taking out maybe critical time from the family or from work to come and do banking. So it's much more about driving um, that messaging, educating clients that you know the digital banking era is here. We've been a number one in the digital space for quite a while, more recently awarded by Global Finance, again being recognized within Ghana, and I think local awards were also shared with us earlier this year about our digital service. And not only that, I think our client experience. We've also been recognized for offering you know, exceptional um, customer service, which is something that we ride on in terms um, of that and how our whole, whole digital service offering is also going to come into play in the near future. So how do you sort of resolve customers' issues when they come? How fast are you able to deal with it? So one of the things that we've done, especially in the mobile space and that you're going to see very soon, is bringing in a lot of those service requests that people typically have to come to the branch. We're now making you do self-service. So for example, you want a new checkbook, you need to change your PIN, you need a statement, many of us normally need it to do certain transactions. Or more recently I found out, you know, a lot of us in Ghana, you want to travel abroad, you want to go to the US or to the UK, and typically at the embassy they would ask you for a statement. Now you're able to use our SC mobile offering to request for that and we immediately email it to you. Saves you time in terms of having to, to come and queue, you know, at the bank or maybe in some instances, you know, contacting your relationship manager to provide that for you. So we've automated as many of those um, requests that typically people would have to come into the branch or call our contact center to get help with. So we're quite excited about that because I think, again, as I said, it's giving back time to clients. And then you're not worried about having to come to a bank between, you know, 9 to 4 o'clock when the bank is open. You can now do this anytime, anywhere, including weekends. We remain open 24-7. And you think that competition is not a problem to you? Um, I don't think it's about that. Again, as I said before, it's about our clients. It's really about our clients and what we can offer to them. We've seen a big opportunity in the market in terms of the youth and the emerging affluent that is coming up. As I said, we are getting a, a richer middle class in um, Ghana. And we're trying to use, obviously, from our client engagement and communication to demonstrate for them that we would probably be the best bank for them in terms of their financial um, needs. Of course, not precluding that there would be competition out there, but we believe, obviously, in terms of what we'll be able to off offer our clients would be the best that we can. You've been watching us. Um, this is the lady who sits at the helm of affairs with regards to corporate affairs, marketing and branding with Standard Chartered Bank, Olga um, Kimani, she's been speaking to us, telling us what they have been doing. And she tells you, come on, I mean, competition is not a problem. They, as a bank, are well placed and positioned to ensure that you get the best of service, you get satisfied, and when it comes to the digital area, they have what it takes to give you. I saw an email um, or a new a press release talking about something 360 that you were supposed to have been doing. Oh, the 360 Rewards yes. program. So yes, we launched rewards. this last week on yes. uh, Friday. Quite excited about that as well. So a lot of feedback that we did, because again, we do speak to our clients uh, quite a bit. They said that they would have appreciated, you know, an element of loyalty to show that in terms of the take-up that they've had with the product. So we partnered with quite a number of our um, uh, strategic alliances to be able to offer you now um, rewards whether it's in terms of free tickets, <laughs> free <laughs> fuel, uh, et cetera, depending on what it is. As you're talking about our 360 rewards program, this is something that we're quite excited about. We launched last Friday. It's really a loyalty program for our clients where we're looking to reward them you know, with fuel, travel, shopping, dining, the typical things that a lot of them would be getting um, involved in. It covers people who are doing debit and credit card uh, transactions. Are you not using this to kind of get more clients in the area of your digital banking? As I said, it's a reward program, but obviously it's one of those that we say that the more we can get a lot of our clients using the digital channels, the better it is for them. And even for us operationally from a back end, because we're able to service those requests a lot quicker than them spending time in traffic to come into the branch to get to speak you know, to our branch uh, team members. So again, definitely a, a, a path to making sure that the whole digital migration 
happens um, a lot quicker. So when you say that for your clients, it means that if I'm not a client of the bank, I cannot assess or be part of it? Oh, we are hoping very much that people will be very excited about the offers that we have in our 360 rewards, that it will be attractive for them to consider um, Standard Chartered. Uh, as you know, a banking institution that they would consider for their financial transactions. Thank you very much, Olga Arari Kimani. Thank you and, very much. Um, she is the regional head, uh, corporate affairs, brand and marketing. That is for Africa and Middle East. And she's been speaking to us about what Standard Chartered in Ghana hopes to do going forward. If you're thinking of a place to bank, then it is Standard Chartered Bank that you have to be.